Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for you today. This is a continuation of my in-depth updated guide series. We're on to gadgets. Now, as per usual, in the pinned comment, you'll find timestamps for each relevant section of the guide. So if you're looking for just the might section, precision section, single target, AOE ranged, uh, whichever uh, your preference is for gadgets and what rotation or loadout you're looking for, uh, you'll find that in that comment section with those timestamps. Now, I did want to offer a disclaimer uh, right away. Now, I did these are uh, meta rotations for gadgets. So, I had um, a pitch, nerfed pitch, snowy day, depending on how you know them by. Uh, help me with these just to make sure that I'm bringing you guys the most uh, current ones uh, so that uh, you guys aren't kind of left in the dark. Now, what that means is that gadgets relies on super speed, the, the move mode. So if you're flight, uh, skimming, or acro, uh, it does put you at a severe disadvantage for gadgets because of how uh, gadgets use the move mode powers in terms of like cyclone push, in terms of like dervish for prec, in terms of tornado pull. So um, you will be losing massive damage if you're not super speed. And you have to consider the fact that if you're going gadgets, which is primarily always a meta power in terms of its strength, uh, that you should be willing to spend the extra five bucks or whatever it is to change move modes. If, you, if you're stuck on flight, skimming, or acro, um, you can certainly still be gadgets, but but you know you have to accept the fact that you're going to be doing less damage, much less damage. So you may want to consider another power set. So that that's just my disclaimer. Uh, gadgets always been one in one with uh, super speed, so it's just kind of one goes in with the other. Um, is that balance? That's the question for another video, but uh, for the sake of this, unfortunately, if there's going to be a lot of comments saying, what if I'm flight, what if I'm scheming, what if I'm macro, I don't know, because no gadgets player that considers their DPS something they want to uh, worry about would be flight, scheming, or acro. So, just want to get that out of the way at the beginning. Let's get into the guide here. So, I want to have this section in. This is more talking about the sorry, the differences between gadgets with PS4, PS5, and PC, because they're very different in how they act in terms of like gadgets stealth lag or stealth delay or, or server, the server status impacting gadgets. Um, what I find is that you'll see a lot of PS players or a lot of gadgets videos where they're clipping uh, three powers at once or four powers even. So they do like tornado pull clip with return to normal, then hit P dart. So obviously that's that's amazing. You can do all three. You get the single target damage from tornado pull. You got the AOE damage from P dart. So great for boss fights. But for PC, it it, uh, it doesn't work out that often for us. Um, I think it's just either stealth just registers better and doesn't allow you to clip anything after return to normal. So let's see if we can actually get it to work here. So tornado pull. Peter should end at the bottom, so we have to, so that time it worked, ironically. So basically we had tornado pull, we had the stealth damage, and Peter damage. So that's amazing what you would want to work with. Um, that's what you want to go for. Uh, and obviously if you miss that Peter, that's a lot of damage, especially on AoE. So let's see if it will work a second time. No, see that time? Tornado pull and just stealth. So I'm clipping it the same way, like I can't clip it any faster on PC. So we're going to stealth, hit those three, same thing, didn't get it again. So it's something that I think is more consistent on PS, like when I was doing it with my league mates, uh, they were getting it like six or seven times out of ten, getting it to work. Same thing that time, just tornado pull and stealth. So it's one of those things where you have to try it, because it, obviously if you miss it, it's massive damage. If you're talking a whole set of ads and you miss that P dart, that's, that's a lot of damage. See, that time worked. Tornado Pull, Stealth, and P-Dart. So it's nothing that I'm changing. It's just that uh, it's registering differently. So I'm not sure how it works on PS4. or, or I know it works a little bit more consistently on PS5. But uh, when you see that, uh, especially in, in differences in the parsers, it's most likely be because you're doing that clip and it's not working. So same thing. Stealth, those three. Same thing. Only the two again. So I'm my variables aren't changing. Going into Stealth, hitting those three keys as fast as you can on a keyboard. Uh, and then it's just not registering or, or register sometimes. So that's just something I want to point out more or less like an FYI. Uh, it's something that uh, you may not notice. You know, like you're doing the rotation, you know the loadout, but something that may not be always registering in content uh, or maybe registering easier for you. But I know a lot of the PC players I spoke to, it just doesn't, doesn't register like that frequently for us. Uh, I think it's just because of how PC works in terms of uh, registering stealth a little bit faster. But when you can get it, obviously it's great. It's the same thing, Peter, at the end there. So one of those things where it's you wish it was a bit more consistent. 
uh, because obviously we'd like to get that PR damage every single time, where I think, what was that, um, every other time almost? Uh, we got it there, missed it, missed it, missed it, got it there, missed it, got it there. So still not the perfect consistency we want to see it, but um, better than I've seen in the past. So just a FYI. Okay, so in terms of a spec for gadgets, you can have super inspired spec, critical attack chance, critical attack damage, maxing might and power, and then putting the rest into health. Iconic powers, uh, you don't need to worry about taking clown box, uh, that was just me messing around. Uh, Robot psychic, pheromone bloom, and you know, venom boost are going to be uh, positives. Super speed, you want to make sure you take cyclone push. Uh, the power nades, because gadget is, is a little bit power heavy, uh, depending on your controller, but uh, you don't necessarily need to, but you definitely require cyclone push. Speed drain is an option as well. I prefer Fairbone Bloom myself, uh, just because speed drain is a dot, where Fairbone Bloom, you get that burst damage, but still the same concept as a 2500 uh, supercharge. Weapons. Uh, I'm brawling. If you want to take a little bit extra damage, you could be dual wield, but once again, it's just basically your choice. In terms of augments, might augments, an origin and adaptive, uh, and in my generator mod, which you can't see right now, it would have uh, might obviously in the, in the red ones, and then in the blue slots, I have health. Uh, that's more for buff troll. If you find yourself really struggling in power, you can switch those out to power generator mods, but uh, since buff trolling is, is the meta, which I'll cover in the controlling section, uh, I take health for that. And increases your survivability because gadget melee isn't really good. Same thing with single target, you're going to be melee. In terms of gear, weapons are going to be absorption adapter, uh, head mod, depending. You have a couple of situations, single target, you're going to have battle display, critical battle display, uh, fixed taking gas is when you're running like a melee rotation. Neck mod, I uh, didn't change that out. Uh, because I was, wearing deep, I was wearing DPS neck as a controller. So obviously that should be escalating might. Back mod, 100% is going to be accelerated suppressor turret. Chest mods can be penetrating strikes. Leg mod doesn't matter. I mean, technically, I think there's fear gas one, uh, but I mean, the health returns is not uh, not doesn't scale whatsoever. You're gonna have legion might. Hand mod's gonna be improved stealth. That's another important one. Foot mod uh, is gonna be tumbling master. Now, artifacts, you do have some options. So, in terms of gadgets, you want to run amulet as much as you can. Uh, so, in every situ situation, you'll be running amulet. Sometimes you can't get away with that in your groups, but ideally, gadgets uh, pairs really well with amulet. So, that's why, you know, nine times out of ten, try to run this as much as you can. But if you can't, if you're going to die, um, like obviously when I park, I'm not going to show you with amulet because I'm going to die because I'm, I don't have a healer. You just sub in grim. So that's the sub out. So anytime you can't use amulet, you just sub in uh, Grenorum. So for melee specifically, you, you run either Gemini because of the supercharges. Um, you can also run, if you're, run, if you're running like a, a really heavy, um, or sorry, if you're not running a Gemini spam group, you could run like a Scrap. But if you're running in a, in a Gemini spam group, which I mean by uh, both healers are running multiple supercharges, it could be a tank running a supercharge and getting lots of uh, uh, green circles. Then you'd summon Gemini, obviously, for that, because you, you wouldn't need the regen. And then there'll be some builds with gadgets that you run strategy card. So gadgets is kind of artifact intensive in terms of uh, all the switch. There's different combinations, uh, different combos, but uh, the really the one that you're always going to have is transformation. Ideally, you want amulet, uh, but if you can, you use Grim. And then for melee specifically, it's going to be either Gemini or Scrap, but other rotations are going to have the strategy card. And in terms of trinkets, same thing. I mean, Shadow Bad, Vampire Bad, Dark Star Contract Bad, whatever you have access to, the DPS trinket, Orbital, and Spot Drop. And then in the Affinity Modes, of, uh, sorry, Affinity Modes, Affinity Bonuses, uh, you got Might and A and B. Uh, C doesn't really apply, you can just keep that for controlling. And D, I use Sure Footed because it kind of works for DPS and control. There's not really any amazing ones out there. Auto Breakout can get you into some trouble. 
So there's the spec for gadgets. Let's actually move on to load up. So with respect to a gadget's melee loadout for Might, we're looking at Cyclone Push. That's always clipped by a suppressor because of the long animation dovetail in Cyclone Push. So if we weren't clipping Cyclone Push, you're looking at really a drastic animation where obviously you don't want that each, each and every single time. Where if you're clipping it with suppressor turret, there is no animation. That's going to be Vortex Cannon, Implosion Mine, P-Dart, Stealth, and then on Stealth we have three supercharges, Cuff em and EMP Pulse. Cuff em is a single target move, it's there just for a little bit extra damage before EMP Pulse. Uh, the three supercharges, ideally with like a Gemini spam group, uh, you can get these off consistently every 12 seconds going to stealth. Uh, or if you're running scrap, same thing, same concept is that you have two 2500s and a 5000 just so you're always getting that supercharged damage. Ideally with a Gemini circle, uh, death for melee. And then uh, if not, then you're just doing EMP pulse, uh, clip with, uh, sorry, cuff them and then clip with the EMP pulse. So, we'll show the uh, rotation here. Okay, so you get the gist of the rotation there. So it's going to be consistently well over 1.1 mil, and I'm not even running the amulet. That's the thing. It's uh, I had to take the OP head off because that's going to put me over the dominance cap, which will just send the target flying. Um, and then the amulet will obviously buff by about 30% my might. So, and then in a raid, I actually would, in our actual content, I would have that uh, as a passive buff, including augments and everything. So, actually, in a raid itself, this rotation easily goes up to like 1.5, 1.6 mil per uh, per 10 second parse. And then obviously, you might have some dips just with how stealth lines up. That's why that one parse jumped to like a dump, uh, drop down to 75, because obviously the hits are way lower just because that wasn't uh, just the odd stealth rotation. So, that's the, certainly the potential of that. Uh, in content, obviously, it's much higher, especially because you have the Gemini proc, but uh, it's uh, certainly a uh, rotation that uh, you don't have to worry about. So, like I said, the only really clips that you have to worry about is just always jump canceling suppressor turret, like you saw, because you don't want that full rotation to come out. And then in stealth, which is cuff him, which is basically here, and then jump cup off. So obviously you don't want that. We can go back into stealth here. You don't want that full cuff and rotation to release. You can jump cancel it and then EMB. Okay, so in terms of single target spec, 
would stay the same as melee in terms of super powered critical ch chance and damage, maxing up might, putting everything else into health. I mean, technically, if you had space uh, or if you had dueled, uh, you can put some into practice for the weapon taps, but really, it's not that much damage. Iconic powers, robot sidekick, knee of venom boost. Uh, super speed, now the important one is to take is tornado pull. And you can take the power nades just in case. And then weapons, I just I still have brawling, but um, if you want a little bit of extra weapon tap damage, you can go dueled. In terms of artifact setup, this is the same thing uh, as I mentioned before. Uh, you always run amulet on this rotation, but it, it's not always going to be acceptable. Like obviously in a solo duo or or even alert or some raids where the healers can't keep up with it. It's not practical to run that uh, Lanier's amulet. So then just watch out for a Grim. So any situation where you see an amulet on my artifact slot, uh, you can easily sub it out with a Grim uh, just for the um, extra passive damage from the pet and, and setting the PI. So one uh, amulet's not practical. But other than that, this is running a strategist card and transformation. So with a single target loadout, Actually, I should mention that uh, once again you're running amulet, but uh, you can't because I'm solo, so I'm running grim. And the biggest change is that your head mod is going to be critical battle display three. That's the big change. Other than that, everything else stays the same. In terms of loadout, you're going to be running tornado pull. You're clipping that with uh, suppressor turret because just like cyclone push, tornado pull has a really awkward animation dovetail. Fear gas, taser pull, stealth, robot sidekick. On stealth, you have cuff him, surprise attack, battle display. And then you have Fixation, Gash, Knee, Venom, and Robot Sidekick. So if you've never played Gadgets before, um, cause I don't know if I mentioned this previously in the video, but you have to have Robot Sidekick on Stealth if you don't want it to blow up. So if you have Robot Sidekick on normal loadout, but you don't have it on Stealth, every time you go into Stealth, a Robot Sidekick will blow up. Just if you didn't already know that. Uh, this rotation is also um, not so much melee based, but it's more closer to mid-range, uh, just with using Cuff and the Surprise Attack. So the point of here is that in Stealth, you're going to be using Cuff and Surprise Attack, and then ending with Battle Display. That was a Stealth lag. <laughs> so, when you, the first time you go into Stealth, that's what it's uh, going to look like. So, make sure you go into Stealth before Raid. So, normally... <laughs> You're using Cuff them, Surprise Attack, and then Battle Display. So then you proc Battle Display for the 2% Critical Head mod, and then you basically just clip the, the end of uh, Surprise Attack. So that's essentially how that works there. And then everything else will be in the rotation there. So, let's story the rotation. Okay, with gadgets there, 
Actually, let's uh, stop Grim from attacking. It's the same thing. Get it, you'd have a pretty much permanent 30% might buff for running amulet. Uh, it's easy to sustain, just not so much obviously by yourself, like a duo or alert or whatever, but in raids, much more realistic because taser pull is um, a really low power cost. So it's a 100 power cost spam move, basically. Same thing, fear gas is only 200. Uh, Tornado pull is also 100. So it's very, very manageable with amulet yourself. The only power cost really is stealth. That's it. And you're only using that every 12 seconds. So it's very, very manageable by healer. Uh, and then you can see the, the results, uh, everything else, you know, those 70k parsers would turn into like 80, 90 k's with amulet. So it's it's something that uh, you definitely should level as gadgets, uh, and certainly that is easily sustainable as gadgets and single target, much more than any other power set. Uh, it's pretty much designed for gadgets when you think about it, in terms of all the 100 power cost moves where, like you look at like munitions or mental or something like that, where uh, you have a lot of 200, 300 power cost moves, which just is, you can still do it, but it's just not as realistic, so... Uh, as I said before, the reason why in stealth you're clipping uh, battle display is just to get that 2%. Then you have the two supercharges in stealth as well. So it's it's very, pretty much when you're doing it right and, and you're not having any stealth lag, then you're pretty much um, you know at the top of my single target game. Okay, so variant on the gadget single target uh, for max range. The loadout does change. So we've got uh, taser pull, clip with suppressor turret, fear gas, and we've got photon blast, the finisher, stealth, you know, robust sidekick, and on stealth we've got the P-Dart uh, return to normal chain of pull clip with a couple supercharges and then obviously sidekick so it doesn't blow up. So the way that looks here, in terms of the rotation, let's show you here. So in terms of a max range AOE armory for gadgets, it's not something that comes up too often in terms of needing that type of rotation, but similar with light, uh, people just always ask for it. So uh, it's essentially a variation on the single target AOE mix rotation you saw. So it's going to be napalm grenade, clip with suppressor turret, fear gas, uh, stealth. On stealth, you're going to have cryo foam, clip with battle display, and return to normal. Uh, technically, you could have taser pull if you want here instead of neovenom. I'm just putting it. You're not going to use taser pull. It's just there, just in case there's like, like the odd chance there's like a single target ad or or the odd chance where um, it turns into a single target fight. But then you have that other armory as well, so you might as well run like a supercharge here, so you don't have to worry about hitting it on stealth. So that's obviously your option. Basically, this is like a free a free power depending on what you want to use it for. And then the only thing you have to worry about uh, cryo foam is that I'll show you here. So when you're using cryo foam, you have to delay a slightly a little bit in terms before you clip with battle display return normal. So if I if I go into stealth here, clip it right away, there's no damage. I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of stealth, 
eventual one that I've worn off, just because this is the first time I went into stealth. But as you saw, that if you're clipping it too fast, there's no damage. So uh, once the stealth cooldown's off, now if I hit it, wait for a second, then clip, then I'm getting the damage. So just don't instantly clip cryofoam. Uh, you just have to wait just like literally just a second just for the animation to come, and then you can get it. So I go into stealth, foam, and then, well, obviously the, the other ones weren't off cooldown yet, but you get it there. So let's show you the actual rotation here. Okay, that's the gist of it there. Very, I mean, a very simple, very effective rotation. You're saying at pretty much around 1.3 mil, and then that's also without the amulet. So you've got to pass a buff from the amulet by 30% that you're missing, because napalm grenade, once again, it's only 100 power cost. Fear gas is a 200 power cost. So it's very easily sustainable with amulet at max range, give you that extra 30%, and then that extra 30% is also going to increase the damage on strategy's card. Uh, and then obviously the might that I'm missing from wearing the OP head. So it's, it's still very simple, very effective max range AOE rotation. Okay, so you will find yourself in situations in raids uh, where you have to have single target and AOE. Or there's uh, times in the boss fight where it's heavily single target but then ads come out. Uh, and then you have to kill those ads. So the easiest example to to understand with this is Trigon uh, and Convergence of the Making Elite first boss or, or regular, but uh, Trigon Elite. So basically Trigon is, is single target the entire time, but he has his eyes come out uh, on different phases. So when those eyes come out, obviously you can't use a single target rotation because you're going to be losing massive uh, AOE damage. So in a situation like that, this is where this loadout comes in handy. So it's Taser Pull, Suppressor Turret, Fear Gas, Napalm Grenade, Stealth, Robot Psychic, and on Stealth is P-Dart, Return to Normal, and Tornado Pull. So with a loadout like this, it allows you to keep a single target rotation, but then you can switch to AoE when it becomes necessary. So what I mean by that is typically you have the rotation as just Taser Pull, Clip with Fear Gas, and you just keep doing this all the time, and then obviously when Stealth is up, you use Stealth. And then with this rotation is when you can switch so when the eyes come out, or whenever the AOE or the ads come out, then you just switch. Then it's Napalm Grenade. So you just lose Taser Pull because it's single target, and then you're just doing Napalm Grenade in that rotation. And same thing in the Stealth. You have those three powers. So that's that's what this loadout is going to be. Uh, it's kind of situational. A lot of gadgets you, uh, loadouts are situational and utility based. That's what leaves, gives gadgets all this flexibility and why it's been a meta power for so long, is because it's it can easily adapt to different situations. There's not like one loadout fits all. You can have like eight or nine different loadouts that'll fit different situations. So this is just one of those uh, situations where if you have need single target and AOE on the same loadout, same armory, then this is what you can do.
So really, it's a you know simple concept to understand. The parsers, I mean, don't read too much in the parsers because obviously this is designed for in content. But the, the principle is that if you're finding a boss, then you don't need to use napalm grenade because napalm grenade is going to be AOE. So then you could just do the typical taser pull and the fear gas rotation and just keep cycling that between stealth. But then when a boss comes out with adds, like say Trigon first boss, for example, then you just switch. Napalm grenade, you just switch out the rotation. And you do that until the adds are gone, and then you just switch back. That's all it is. It's a basically a utility rotation where you need single target and AOE on the same rotation from range. Perfectly, you're perfectly viable at range, so there's no danger. So that's a utility rotation there. Okay, so welcome to the precision side of the guide. Usually I'd be doing this on test servers, so I'd have access to uh, precision gear. I uh, don't necessarily have all of it on the US side here because I'm, I'm not a prec player, I'm a might player, so, but we'll go through this back regardless. So stat points, weapons expert, critical attack chance and damage for skill points, maxing up precision, iconic powers you're taking robot psychic and neo-venom boost, Super speed, you don't have to take the power nates. I do just because Gadget is a little bit power intensive for Prec in terms of other power sets, but it's not required. Uh, take Vortex Trap and Dervish. Uh, for weapons, it's really going to be just dependent on your spec. For melee, uh, for example, for a brawling build, you're going to be specking all of brawling and then all of, sorry, martial arts. And then taking uh, Shuriken Storm. And then vice versa, if you're specking like dual wield, then obviously spec off a dual wield all of bow, and then you're taking um, explosive shot and flurry shot at the bottom. And if you're specking one-handed for like flurry, then it'd just be all of the one-handed tree. Uh, you don't need anything else because it's not weapon mastery, you're just using uh, flurry. So it's completely dependent on what your weapon is or what your spec is. Now in terms of augments, uh, obviously it's going to be precision for your origin. Uh, adaptive ones, I don't have any prec ones, I just have might. So uh, imagine these are might ones. <laughs> Sorry, imagine these are prec ones. Uh, I've taken a flex soda just to kind of make up the difference because once again in my generator mods, I have might in my generator mods where you should have precision. And then in the blue ones, uh, take health. In terms of gear, weapons can be blast adapter. A head mod could be a supercharged mod or battle display. But it most likely it's going to be the supercharged fixation gas or need venom boost. Neck mod's going to be relentless precision. Back mod's going to be suppressor turrets. Chest mod's going to be penetrating strikes. Hand mod's still going to be improved stealth. Foot mod's going to be tumbling mastery. I mean, you would have precision legion in your head mod. Your face mod, sorry. Artifacts are always going to be transformation strategist and grom. And the art trinkets are completely up to you. Damage trinket, uh, pet trinket, orbital spot drop. So let's get into the loadouts here. So in terms of precision melee, uh, there's two different types. You can do brawling or you can do one-handed. I mean, there's obviously different kinds, but the, the two that I'm going to show you are brawling one-handed. So in terms of uh, brawling, it's going to be napalm grenade, jump clip with suppressor turret, dervish, basically just tap cancel with your weapon, battle display clipped into stealth, and then stealth is DMP. Now that the clips are a little bit off because ideally with a shuriken storm, uh, you're going to want to have a 2.5 second power like thermite mine, but I mean, you just let Dervish take a little bit longer in terms of extra, some extra melee damage, but uh, ideally that half second makes a big difference, but you just let one of the clips run a bit long, but uh, it's still completely viable. And I mean, once again, you can use it at range and, and or melee, where one-handed flurry is a little bit tight of a cone damage, where with shuriken storm, you know, you're going to hit everything. So let's show you the rotation here.
Okay, so in terms of uh, precision melee, gadgets works a lot better. Like um, usually with brawling, you'd use like a uh, haymaker, where that's just too slow for gadgets. Doesn't need to. Uh, or you can use shrieking and storm there, and you're still getting consistently over a million. Uh, in a raid, you'd obviously either have a troll using a tetra buff, but then you get the extra damage from napalm grenade, uh, dervish, and EMP. Or if they're using cog, then you get the extra damage from uh, shrieking and storm. So really, get both your bases covered. Uh, which is nice with uh, in terms of like a might heavy rotation like that. Or if you've got the extra scope points into might, then you're doing well as, uh, additionally. But uh, we'll show you the one-handed uh, version or variation next. Okay, so in terms of one handed variation, uh, you'll see you'll do more damage on a sparring target. It's a little bit less reliable in content because of how uh, tight the cone is there on um, Flurry. So if the ads are really grouped together, you can do that, but if not, they're gonna, you're going to miss damage. But in terms of loadout, really the only thing that changes, uh, Napalm Grenade is subbed up for P-Dart because you're not going to be clipping it that quickly. So it's P-Dart clip with Suppressor Turret, uh, Dervish uh, just tap cancel clip. So all I'm doing is Dervish tap cancel. Like, all you do is just whatever your weapon attack is. So, Dervish, I'm canceling it. And obviously, just press the target, just dump. But in terms of stealth, exact same. You're just hitting EMP pulse, having some supercharges. So, there's the, uh, the one handed version variant of uh, melee. So for gadgets, uh, single target precision is probably the loadout that I'm going to screw up the most just because I flare shot like once in a blue moon. We've got Tornado Pull, Clip of Suppressor Turret, Dervish, Taser Pull, Stealth, Robot Psychic. On Stealth is the Quad Clip, so it's going to be Tornado Pull, Battle Display, Suppressor Turret, Taser Pull, No Way Out. And then Neo Venom Boost and Psychic, so your Psychic on your normal loadout doesn't blow up. Uh, now in terms of Dervish, yes it is going to be melee to get that extra tick of damage, but uh, you have so much mobility with Flurry Shot and you can move in and out and try to get that tick. If you miss it, not a big deal, it's just there to uh, like a clip placeholder, but uh, if you can get close enough to use it, then great. So let's uh, get into the rotation and let's see how much I butcher it.
you're going to get the gist of it there. There's really, it can be done way smoother than that. <laughs> like, there's plenty of people you can watch on Twitch or other YouTube videos that are gadgets prac that uh, you can watch and, and get uh, a feel for how smooth that rotation is going to be, but that's essentially it there. The, the only thing to watch out for is um, my flurry shot should have been a little bit longer because my taser pull into stealth was coming up um, after my tornado pull dispressor turret. Because if you, if you do that afterwards, they're not going to be on cooldown for the quad clip. So that's the only thing you have to watch out for. Um, the other thing you can do is, is not be in movement mode. If you're in, if you're in movement mode, uh, it's a little bit harder to, to keep the, the floating. Or that's It's just a uh, something that's always helped me is not to be in movement mode when I'm doing that. I have much more mobility, much easier to, to kind of float while I'm, while I'm doing everything. And obviously it's with the dominance that I have, I'm going to be pulling everything closer. So it's just, uh, it's one of those things where I literally just practice makes perfect. Um, I've said it before, <laughs> you know, I'll flurry shot and then I won't flurry shot again for like two months until I make another video or something like that for it. But uh, once again, there's the essentials there and it's just getting it smoother. That's all it is. So in terms of a precision range loadout, we're looking at Napalm Grenade, Suppressor Turret, Thermite Mine, uh, Dervish, Stealth, Sidekick, and on Stealth we have the Quad Clip, so it's going to be Foam, Battle Display, Suppressor Turret, P-Dart, uh, Knee Venom Boost, and Sidekick, so Sidekick doesn't blow up. In terms of Dervish, that's more just if you get close up to an ad and, and get a little bit extra damage. Uh, it's essentially a free power slot, so if you want to use Knee Venom Boost so you don't have to worry about hitting a Supercharge and Stealth, that's perfectly fine. Uh, it's it's essentially a free power. You're not going to use it because the cooldown on Thermite might be 2.5 and, and Napalm Grenade being 0 0.5 along with Suppressor Turret and the cooldown on that. You're only going to be using these two abilities to clip back and forth. So you're not going to be using Dervish at all. It's just there just in case. And then we'll quickly show you what uh, it'll look like here in terms of the quad clip. So I'm going to Stealth. I'm going to hit these three, and then basically I just hit P-Dart on the way down. So I've got Foam out, and I've got P-Dart hit. So that's essentially all I'm doing in stealth. Okay. So now that's all set, let's show you the rotation. So you get the gist of the rotation there. It's, it's really straightforward and simple and also has really great results. You know, consistently over 1.1, 1.3, like basically 1.4 mil, 1.4 mil, 1.35 mil. So that's all uh, max range. Uh, obviously in a raid, you'd be a little bit higher because I mean, obviously I'm lacking a bit because I don't have uh, prec augments <laughs> or adaptive augments. I only have the origin ones. So your precision, your brawling shirk and storm would be uh, stronger than mine. Uh, 
I mean, this rotation, gadgets in general, just because of how much you're using Napalm Grenade and, and Foam P-Dart, uh, it helps by having a lot of skill points in Might as well, so it's kind of offset in that rotation. So in a raid, if you, if you have a buff troll using a, a Tetra, you're still getting some decent buff because of your, still, your Might abilities. And then if you've got a, a troll using a Cog buff, you're still getting all that damage from Brawling Shurik and Storm. So there's the range rotation. As for the controlling side, controlling really in general has kind of shifted metas in terms of more of a, a buff troll style. Uh, so I'll kind of cover that spec. Uh, like a power troll style is is all my early guides. Um, it's really straightforward how to power troll in terms of artifacts, same thing, straightforward artifacts. So in terms of buff troll, really the only thing that changes is that uh, a buff troll is based on health because you're running the artifacts, uh, claw, I mean, a Rao, and then Tetra, or if you're, you're running with a Precision DPS, you'd run a Kogamageddon. So that's the main focus. That's what makes your buff trolls, these three artifacts, and then subbing out Tetra or Kog, depending on uh, what your group makeup is. But in terms of a spec, uh, you're still going to be super power because you're not as much focusing on weapon combos. So a uh, hybrid, like I usually go hybrid, but hybrid only works if you're always putting like a hand blaster solar flame in between your powers. Uh, if you aren't, then you're going to lose power in the long run. Uh, so if, if you're not going to, even if you miss like, you know, three or four rotations, you're going to, you're going to um, starve yourself for power. So it doesn't really matter in in this case, having the extra Dom and, and uh, even Vit and Resto, uh, you'll make it up with a claw, but uh, it's just more sustainable to have super power rotation for buff trolling. In terms of critical power chance and magnitude, you're still taking both those. Uh, this one, you're taking, I mean, really it's going to depend on your group, but you should be taking all the health, max your health, and then put everything else into VIT. Uh, you don't need might and power because you're running that super powered spec, uh, where if you're running hybrid, then you would if you're going to constantly do that rotation. But you may have to take a bit more of it depending on your group because uh, it's dependent completely on the claw proc. So in terms of iconic powers, you don't need to take anything. In terms of super speed, I will take the innate combos just to get some extra power return back. In terms of weapons, I'm still using Hand Blaster Solar Flame. That hasn't changed. Now in terms of loadouts, that's still the same as well. So I'm still using Stasis Field, Defibrillator, Napalm Grenade as my heal debuff, and Paralyzing Dart as my damage debuff, Distract, and Battle Drone. So really all that changes in terms of that is just these these artifacts. And and you're taking health trinket. So ideally if you have heartthrob or like the um, um, servo communicators, those ones, those uh, give 5% health. Ideally you'd want to take those. I mean, it's not the end of the world if you don't have one, but it's still nice. Uh, chest mod, you're going to be taking hardy for that extra 5% back. Uh, hand mod, you can either take max damage, improve stealth. You're not running stealth and controllers, so you don't really need it. In terms of uh, if you're going, you know, pure power tro or sorry, pure buff troll, you take a uh, health legion. But uh, since there's no mod or recovery kit to take it out, uh, if you're primarily DPS and controlling use a backup roll, then don't worry about that. Uh, your head mod, that's probably not going to be right anyway because it's DPS spec. But head mod obviously would be battle drone, so nothing out of the ordinary there. Weapon mods going to be replenishing adapter to give yourself some power return. Neck mod, you have the choice. Um, because of claw, you're not hitting, um, because of how claw works, it changes your group weapon buff, um, basically into something that, uh, something different in terms of you don't have an instant recharge anymore. So if I, if I do claw once, it puts the claw buff on, but if I hit it again, it's not going to give instant power all the group. All I have is the claw buffs, or if I took this artifact off. You know, I could keep uh, I could keep draining myself and, and give myself power back each time. So that's the that's the downside of claws. You lose your instant buff, which is why um, if you're clipping, say, every single debuff with defibrillator, you're going to run out of power because it's a it's not necessary. You've already you have the claw buff for 12 seconds, and then yeah, that's when you have to reapply it. So that's why taking the neck mod for escalating. Um, uh, what is it here? I might as well show you. For escalating punishing procs, that only works each time you use a group power heal. So, either or. 
I mean, if you want to do a little bit more damage, obviously, because you're, you're a Tetra buff. I'm not talking about, like, battle trolling. I'm just talking about a little bit more damage. You can take Escalating Might. Uh, if you really feel like the group is starved for power, then you can take interesting, um, Escalating Replenishing procs. There's not going to be really a night and day difference between the both. Back mod's going to be, um, obviously not survival because I'm not munitions, but uh, what, whatever back mod um, that you would choose. So I'm going for back. These are choices here. Since we're really not running anything, I'm not running suppressor. Like if you're a gadget DPS, obviously you'd have suppressor turret accelerated, but you know I'm not running new neutralizer. I'm not using battle display as, as controlling, and I'm not using holographic decoy. So once again, it really doesn't uh, impact your choices too much. You could take like breaker regeneration, protection, and same thing. Like mod, nothing really scales. And then same thing for affinity mode bonuses, debuff efficiency, and I take sure footage just because the 8 mod proc for gadgets, or not even gadgets controlling, but controlling in general is just useless. Uh, so at least with this one, each time you're a control, you have a 25% chance to gain uh, control resistance. I'd rather take that one. And then if you're obviously, if you're going once again for pure uh, buff troll, you take uh, affinity mod health in A and B. But in terms of rotation, nothing changes. I mean, you're still going to put that attack to fit the claw buff and this one you just basically not clip because uh, if you're clipping every single debuff then you're just gonna run out of power and then basically when you need to reapply the claw buff you can do that and that's all it is and then you can see my might's gonna be going up so I'm sitting about 80k my health is gonna be 226 base and then that's before, like, a health cookie. That's before, like, a health soda, Omega, anything like that. So that's that's the principle behind a buff troll. I have a video covering that more in depth if you want to see that. I'll just search it on my channel. But uh, that's essentially it for gadgets controlling. So the loadout and rotation doesn't change. It's just how you spec and your artifacts.